restoration of the beauty of spring seems to proclaim the glory of the resurrection. It is the third Sunday of Easter. Easter is a season you know, not a day, where we take plenty of time to settle into all the goodness, all the truth, all the life that is ours through our resurrected Christ. And a special good morning to anyone on our live stream. Welcome to St. Matthews. We love you. You are part of our family, and we are so glad that we can welcome you into our sanctuary and to our worship today. And so please join me in framing this worship by saying <coughs> together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us as though by our own power of piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. Though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murder given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect help in the presence of us all. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that the Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll have Psalm 4. Anthony. 
Answer, Answer me when I call, O oh God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? I know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. May your saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase, I lie down in peace set upon my side, fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me well in safety. The epistle is from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was, re was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or knows him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Three weeks ago, on Palm Sunday, I shared with you that I want us to always remember that we are meant to be changed by scripture, by the living word of God. These stories of God's action and steadfast love in the lives of God's people should change us in such a way that sharing the joy, the amazement, the wonder, the awe becomes our calling. This feels so important in the season of Eastertide, when our readings are portraying for us, sometimes in vivid detail, the earliest moments of that first community just beginning to believe, just beginning to live into their beliefs about the life-changing truth of the resurrection. Those voices are the ones that will teach us what it means to build a world where our lives show forth all the truth, all the healing, all the flourishing of life that is ours forever through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. During the Sundays of Easter, and including the day of Pentecost, a reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles is always the first reading of the day. This is the book, the only book, that gives us the stories of the early church. In it, and
and continuing these themes from its companion volume, which is the Gospel of Luke. God's promises about Jesus have come to fulfillment, first in the ministry and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, and second in the church's witness to all these things. In today's reading, Peter's response to the crowd's amazement that that man born lame had actually been healed is to say, why, why do you wonder at this? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this lame man strong. The overarching message of Acts is simple, and it is as true today as it was at the dawn of the Jesus movement. Embrace Jesus and his teachings, for he accomplishes the salvation that God wants humanity to know. Show repentance when it's necessary, and then begin again, and again, and again. Be fed by the scriptures so you remember all the incredible promises that God is fulfilling right before your very eyes. Pay attention to where you see God showing up alive and at work in the world around you. Live as if you have been changed by all you have seen and heard, and then go and tell others. Here in lectionary year B of our three-year cycle, we have six straight weeks, almost all of Eastertide, where we hear from the New Testament, New Testament book known as 1 John. Now this is not John's gospel, and we're not even sure that it's the same author. That scholarship is back and forth with that. But the theology and the language connects it with the same community. This readings, week's readings open with an exclamation of joy and gratitude and wonder. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. To be children of God is far more than a title or a description. It is identity. It is relationship. It is a vocation that is spoken into existence by God. Because God says it, it is so. It is a life-changing reality born out of the gift of this love, and as with any gift, it brings responsibility. We have been called to take on the character of God by doing what is right, by loving our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, as God has loved us. And when we do this, we show the world all the goodness, all the fullness of God's love. Our love expressed in our actions, that is our witness. And in today's gospel story, the disciples begin in terror and misunderstanding. They think that Jesus is a ghost. And they move outwards towards understanding, towards witness through their experience of Jesus' physical body. Because joy and wonder and disbelief were theirs all at once. He shows them his hands and his feet and to make sure they understand, he asks for food and eats a piece of broiled fish right in their presence. He opens their minds to understand the scriptures, especially all the prophecies about him. And then he says to them, you are witnesses of these things. This is their calling. Once they have received the Holy Spirit, they are to go forth from Jerusalem and share with all the world everything they have seen and heard and known. Beloved, there will always be voices that seek to 
pull us away from the certainty of God's presence, of God's love as the core of our identity, from our confidence in our own proclamation and witness. A world that has not known God may not recognize those who follow God. So our work is to remain steadfast, faithful to our witness in that threshold space between our embrace of this identity now and the fullness of its revealing when Christ returns to draw all people to himself. We are no longer who we were, a truth with which the community of Acts, I am sure, would agree. And we are certainly not yet who we will become. And so we have to live fully in this in-between place where our lives right now show forth the truth of everything we believe. We cannot live as if we have not been changed by the wonder, the amazement, the gratitude of being children of God and expect other people to be changed by our words or our actions. You know, deep down, I really believe that human beings still want to be amazed, to be connected by the events, the stories we share that take our breath away, the ones that fill us with wonder, maybe even make us a little bit afraid and make us believe that majesty, that beauty, that goodness are real and are all around us, just waiting to be claimed. We saw this just last week, didn't we? With the solar eclipse. My Facebook feed was completely filled with people across the country, people I knew, people I'll never meet, who were gathering to share in this experience hosting watch parties with fun little moon and star-shaped snacks for their kids, activities, pulling out their colanders so the light of the receding sun could shine through it on the sidewalk, leaving school early and work and their ordinary routine for just a little while, going outside, putting on their fun little eclipse glasses and looking Upward, everyone looking upward at the majesty of the heavens. Pictures taken by smartphones and by professional photographers alike are shared everywhere you can imagine of every stage of the eclipse, including that breathtaking moment of totality, which is where the moon has passed completely in front of the sun. And the darkness the sudden chill in the air, so unusual in mid-afternoon, took our collective breath away. People made pilgrimage to locations in that path of totality and posted about how it was a spiritual experience for them. They deliberately opened themselves to transformation and then they shared their stories with other people. Now, of course, the only reason social media exists at all is so people can share about themselves and other people can hear it. But on that day, the message was so clear. Something incredible was happening. Something we all long to be part of in some small way. Our wonder, our amazement, our fear, our awe at the wonder of what God could accomplish had brought us together, people all across the country, and united us, united us for just a few minutes in sharing that experience. Today's readings, in fact, all the readings of the Easter season, I think they ask us questions that I heard answered in our eager, are amazed, are needing to be shared response to the eclipse. What does it mean for us to be a community who has been called to bear witness 
to how our experience of the resurrection, our fear turned to joy, our amazement, our wonder, how has that changed us? How are we a people who make known through our actions as Jesus made known through his physical self to the disciples all the truth, all the fulfillment, all the wholeness of that new and restored life that resurrection brings. How are we, as people who have been called children of God, making this gift of love that we have been so abundantly given known to the world, both as what we are experiencing now and the promise of what is to come? Are we living proof that the awe, the amazement, even a little fear of things too big for us to understand are all gifts from God, the God who raised Jesus from the dead and promised to be with us always in the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. May our lives as God's children always show forth the truth of all these things. May our own joy, our wonder, our gratitude guide our witness to a world so hungry for grace, for love, for healing, for the hope that can only be of God. Don't hold on to those things. Give them away because the world needs them. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. prayers of the people is for him too. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Justin our bishop, Michael our presiding bishop, and Audrey our bishop, and for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Today in the Susquehanna Convocation cycle of prayer, we pray for all saints, Salem's crowd. In our diocesan angling cycle of prayer, we pray for 
for the Church of Our Savior, Montoursville, Hope Episcopal Church, Mount Hope, and the Angolan Church in Astoria, New Zealand, and the Polynesia. May I ask your prayers for peace, goodwill among nations, especially our President Joe Biden, our Governor Josh Sapparo, our Mayor Josh Brocious, and our Senator Linda Schlegel Calva, and for all well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, and for our home bomb members. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayer for Mother Dina and family, Father Fred and family, Francis, <coughs> Angela, Tanya, Weston, Mike B, Anita, Carol, Nancy S, Richard S., the Steiner family, Dawson, Ellen and family, Erica, Stan R., Nancy R., Carlos K., Frank L., Tammy R., Barbara and family, Becky, Robert, Kelly, Suzanne, I, Tanner, Fossil, Donna N, Patty N, and Michael, Holly, Sam, Kelsey, Marley, John, Blair, and Vicki, Candace, and Ron. Please pray for all our health care workers, especially Dan D, Kara, Melissa, Janice, and their co-workers. Also, please pray for all serving in our military and law enforcement. I ask your prayers for all the departed, especially Joyce, Patrick, and Ron I. Pray for all those who have died. I ask your thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. the faith and the courage to recreate this old world in your image. We ask this in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against <coughs> God and our neighbor. <coughs> Mighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Peace to everyone on our live stream. We love you. You're part of our family. Thank you for being with us. Carla and I are dedicating our lives to making sure you have all the information you need in our bulletins and our emails and our newsletters. So repeating that seems unnecessary, but always check in with that. Make sure you're in touch with the stuff you're getting. It tells you what's going on. Chicken and waffles Tuesday night, which is one of the, you know, the banner nights of my, whenever that happens, because it's such an amazing meal. I challenge you. I invite you. Bring a friend. Bring someone maybe who's never been, been here. Bring a neighbor. Tell a coworker. Tell someone who's never been here to, to meet us yet. See if you can get someone new to come. Tell them they'll, their lives will definitely be changed by the experience of that food, so it'll be well worth their time. But see, you know, again, see who you can bring that maybe you've never met before. So wonderful to have Tina with us this week, home in Sunbury among all her glorious travels, and to have her on the bench and to have her sharing our music, which is just such a wonderful, wonderful thing. We have an amazing event this week. I'm going to embarrass them a little bit. Where are they? <laughs> Rose and Kirk are getting married this very Saturday. This very Saturday, my very first wedding at St. Matthew's, and I'm just over the moon, right? We're so excited. We have liturgy figured out. We have music. We have readers. Of course, Rose is flower beautiful flowers are one of her gifts, so the church will be lovely, and I have your permission, right, to invite your church family. If you're around Saturday, please come. Come at 1030. Come and hear them share in this moment. They're just over the moon that they have this gift, right, of having found each other and having this life we're going to share. So this coming Saturday, April 20th, 1030 in the morning. Who doesn't want to see a wedding in April in springtime? Come and be with us if you possibly can. We're just all over the moon and so very happy for you. And please know you're constantly in our prayers and you are so enfolded and surrounded by the love of your church community as you embark on this new way of being together, which is wonderful. The tiniest bit of formation for you. Here in the season of Eastertide and up until the day of Pentecost, I'm going to use prayer C. From our, from our Book of Common Prayer. You probably know there are four Eucharistic prayers in the 1979 prayer book for right two. There are the two for right one, and there are also a couple supplementary ones that every now and then I weave in because I like the language. Prayer C is the only one that was new to the 79 prayer book. So that's kind of a fun story. And it has a lot of old language though. It has a lot of scripture which you'll hear a lot of scripture from this particular season of the church year. And it has all the creation language that kind of comes with Earth Day next week. And again, all the budding of spring and just all the creation. I didn't do this on purpose, but it talks about space and in space and galaxies. So it's kind of a fun one for a week that had an eclipse in it. But just a little bit of formation. All the Eucharistic prayers have different language. Some are older language, you know, from an earlier era in the church. Some are a little newer. Some are more simple. Some have a lot of different thoughts woven into them. They're meant to be a banquet. One Eucharistic prayer, year after year, season after season, would be as if you only ever had crackers for food and never anything else. You never had any meat. You never had any eggs. You never had any dessert. The language of the different prayers should feed you. They should teach you. They're all very different. So enjoy this one. This is a fun one for the season. It's a fun one about creation, and it'll be a fun one for us to do together. And as we always do, beloveds, we walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By their will, they were created and had their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. And we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption 
of coming to this table only for solace and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. are the gifts of God for you, who are most surely the holy and hungry people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs>
later on our YouTube channel. I invite you all to join with me in saying this prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray together. Dearest Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we all cannot receive communion in the consecrated bread and wine, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with our hearts, souls, and minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Something we haven't done in a while is to have prayers and anointing, and I just invite any of you who might like to have hands laid upon you and holy oil on your forehead with the sign of the cross. If you want to come up after the service to the altar rail, we will pray for you and touch you with the holy oil, just in case that's in need of your soul for peace or healing or joy or for the tending of your hearts hurting for some reason. Come forward and let us, let us pray for you. And please join me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us children through the resurrection of God's Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and in the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Tina, we're going to pray for Cynthia. 